allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes from our last meeting. Alderperson Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move approval of the minutes. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Are there any resignations this evening? There are no resignations or appointments or confirmation. Thank you. Then we'll go on to the public forum. City Clerk. Okay, first this evening we have Alice Richter. Alice, are you here? Alice is not here. Okay, uh, next we have Audrey Auden. Pardon? Okay, we'll have Roger Auden. <coughs> Roger, if you'd come up to the mic. Pardon? Yes, right up to the mic here. Yep. You might want to pull it down just a little. And Roger, can I have your home address, please? 1027 Bell Avenue, Sheboygan. Okay, and you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. I would just like to preface my remarks by saying thank you for your willingness to serve on the Common Council. That often means making difficult decisions <coughs> as to what is the best, in the best interest of the residents of our city. My wife and I know that. We both served on the council. I served for eight years in, back in the 70s, and I think the desks are still the same. My wife served for 12 years in the 90s. I'm here tonight to address the document on granting a license for a liquor store on North 15th Street and Geely Avenue. Have you ever driven up Geely Avenue? There's a mini mart on 10th and Geely, which sells beer. There's a tavern on 11th and Geely. We have two taverns on 15th and Geely. Now you're deciding whether to grant the license for a new liquor store on the same corner. This area is predominantly residential. As a county board supervisor, I represent this area and am, I am concerned. In a recent conversation with our Sheboygan County Sheriff, we discussed the epidemics of drugs in our community. Heroin was mentioned, how people, so many young people are addicted Many are overdosed and dying. But you know what's the worst addiction, the sheriff said? It's alcohol. <clears throat> so much domestic abuse results from excessive use of alcohol. And I'm concerned for the families, for the safety of the families, spouses, children. The Sheriff's Department and the Police Department called to many incidences of domestic <coughs> abuse. It's rampant in our community. I urge you to please vote no on granting a license for another liquor store. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you, Roger. Um, by any chance, did Alice just walk in? Let's go back to Alice. Alice, would you come up to the front, please? Alice, 
Ellis, can you give me your home address, please? 2208 Cross Court. Okay, and you'll have five minutes. Okay. I won't take five minutes. Okay. Um, I'm a homeowner on, on uh, the corner of Cross and Geely. Cross Court is between North 12th Street and North 13th Street on Geely. And I am all for small business. I'm not opposed to alcohol, but I am worried about my declining neighborhood. I did a little homework, and sort of what the gentleman before me touched on, I found in a six block radius of my home, we have a supermarket with an attached full liquor store. We have two mini marts, Pig Stop and Minute Mart, but we also have in this six block radius 11 bars. I am not throwing this number out to you. I'm going to name these bars Time and a Half Bar, Silver Fern Bar. Jacob Hall, Tommy's Bar, Dennis's, Denny's Bar, Braveheart, Beans 2, Terry's Bar, Poor Richards, Screamers, and Big Daddies. Now, anybody that wants to drink can walk within six blocks and get whatever they want. <coughs> I don't think that Granting a liquor license to someone else is an asset to my neighborhood, which is already drug and alcohol affected. I'm worried about my neighborhood. It's a declining neighborhood, and we certainly don't need any more alcohol. Thank you. Thank you, Alice. Next on the list is Michael. Is it Rieger? <coughs> Michael, if you would like to come up, please. And Michael, can I have your home address? Yes, ma'am. 1214 Geely Avenue. Okay. And you will have five minutes. And I would like to thank the council for the opportunity to speak this evening. I've lived at my residence since 1993. So I've seen lots of changes. And I think I have a good handle on what's good and what's not good for the neighborhood. Um, reiterating what the previous two speakers have just said. Um, <laughs> We have our hands full with crime in the neighborhood relating to drugs, alcohol, prostitution, to name the least. I do not see how another liquor establishment will add any family value to the neighborhood. Again, eight blocks to the north is a full liquor store, Pig, uh, Piggly Wiggly, and the numerous sea of bars that I'm surrounded by. So there are plenty of choices already. <coughs> I think, if I may speak frankly, what I'm most concerned about with these small type businesses is that they come before the council and the licensing committees and they list how they're going to be assets to the community. And they say all the good things that they're going to add to the neighborhood. And quite frankly, they get their licenses granted. And what happens is, they will sell what they will legally be able to get away with. Now, I know for a fact at these smaller liquor store convenience type establishments, they sell pornography, they sell glass paraphernalia under the guise of smoke stuff. I've seen the advertising at Jake's Liquor Store, smoke stuff, pig stop, on 15th Street, which is not affiliated with Piggly Wiggly, has the glass pipes in the front window under the guise of tobacco pipes. Now, I know these things are legal, but we all know that they add nothing to the intricate value of the neighborhood. And a business owner or a potential business owner will tell you ahead of time he has no plans on selling these types of materials. But once he has that license, these are things that he is legally able to sell. And quite frankly, 
I have had my fill of potential business owners promising how they're going to be assets to the neighborhood and turning around and doing completely opposite and adding no value thereof. Thank you for the opportunity to speak this evening. I oppose it. Also, uh, as a side note, almost forgot, my alder person recently took a phone survey of the neighborhood. I do not know the exact count of numbers. I know her answering machine was flooded numerous occasions with no votes opposing this liquor store license being granted. I believe it was 50 to 60 of them, the exact number I'm not sure of, so I, I can't be quoted on that. But I do know that there were at least 50 or 60 neighborhood citizens opposed to this liquor license being granted. So quite frankly, I'm perturbed that I have to come here a second time to vote on being opposed to this. I would have thought the first time was enough to register how I felt about it, and I'm sure the other people that uh, uh, previously called in to, with their concerns thought this matter was laid to rest. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Michael. Uh, next on the list would be Scott Matula. Could you give us your home address, please? 1416 North 5th Street. Okay, and you will have five minutes. <clears throat> I'd like to talk a little bit about this project. I am um, the architect of record that is trying to put this together. And in going through some of these meetings, I've heard a lot of, uh, I guess, some confusion because there was another project that was proposed within that same area. Um, I've heard a lot about being in the middle of a residential neighborhood and being out here again for the same for the same project and, and so forth. The area that we're, we want to build in is the is the northwest corner of 15th and uh, Geely Avenue. It has been I've lived here 25 years it has been blighted and not used for the whole time I've been here, um, it, and it's that whole area is a very commercial area. The RCS is across the street. Uh, the, the what's the oil company? Uh, the Quaker or the Cumart Oil Company is is right there. Um, Pick and Save used to be in that same block, which actually sold liquor. So pretty much we're proposing to put a liquor store in the same block that there was a liquor store probably five years ago. There's numerous, um, the, the, uh, the factories to the south of RCS um, are where the uh, haunted house is, all those areas. There's, there's a mini storage building that is located um, you know, to the north. So when I look at that whole entire block, it is a very predominantly commercial area. Uh, we're not proposing um, to sell, um, you know, we're not a bar, we're a, or it's, it's a liquor store and a convenience store. It's, the building would have two separate components, one is the convenience store, one is the liquor store. They're separated as they're required to be per the, per the codes that are out there. Um, I guess when I look at it, I don't. I, I I hear all this outrage about having liquor stores and 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 whatnot. And I I guess when I look at it, I really don't see a difference if you're if you're going to buy some liquor at a, at a convenience store that's there, or to Superior Liquor, or to Festival Foods, or Walmart, or or, or where have you. Um, it, it, it you know it's something. It, Something has to start on that neighborhood and that street. It's, it's, you're right. It's a lot of bars and it's a lot of very rundown houses. We're proposing to put, you know, somewhere between five hundred thousand and a million dollars investment into that corner. Um, we are taking something that has been blighted, where I'm, I'm sure drug deals and prostitution and all those things have happened because it's a blighted, on a vacant lot, and we're, we're creating something with it. Um, I don't know, I, I kind of take a little offense that, well, now we're going to be having uh, uh, 
prostitution and illegal activities and, 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 and things like that and, and, that, and, and whatnot. It, it's a convenience store and it's a liquor store. It, it's something that is going to be well lit. It's something that's going to be occupied and have people there, which is way more safer than having a vacant building that's sitting there right now. Um, so I, I guess that's, I just wanted to kind of uh, explain about the project a little bit. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. And last, we have Basuda Vadakari. Mr. Vadakari, can you give us your home address, please? 916 Mulberry Lane, Kohler. Okay, and you will have five minutes. Sure, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, respected uh, Chairman of the Committee, respected Mayor, and uh, respected all other members of the community and uh, members of the Common Council. Uh, I applied uh, for this license nearly three and a half months ago. Uh, there was only one license left, so I was told to come back in the next meeting. Same thing happened twice, and uh, somebody else came in and applied for 11th and Gili, and that was right in between the houses, so definitely um, I agree if a liquor store is in between the houses, people will oppose it. And I even at a personal level discussed with him, you are applying in such a place where you are right in between the houses. My location is further uh, towards the west. As everybody knows, RCS and quality state oil in the back. And I am in this kind of business for now nine, 10 years. I own the Clark Station on Indiana Avenue, tidy store in uh, the 14th Street, and the liquor store in Sheboygan Falls. And, uh, Education-wise, I'm an MBA. I'm doing CPA right now on my side. So I am a responsible citizen, and I know what liquor does to a family, how people and the family get hurt with the over-drinking and all these kind of issues. But technically, bars are more uh, serious and uh, more problematic to, uh, to the people than uh, a liquor store. People will come in buy the liquor, put in the bag, go back to home and uh, drink. And if I don't have a liquor store there, it does not mean those people can't drink liquor. They already have the access. Piggly Wiggly is there, Pick and Save was there, other bars are there. So I am doing a, a bigger plan. So I don't see it, I don't see from my standpoint from business and I have other plans over there too. I'm requesting something that's not um, conducive to the society. And uh, other thing is, it's going to be totally separate entrance, separate cash register, so people under 21 won't have access to get in the liquor store side. So selling to minors and all these kind of issues will be eliminated. So I would like the committee members um, to take it from positive standpoint instead of focusing on the negative side like drug dealings, prostitutions, I don't even want to talk about that. Those are, we don't even want to focus on those negative parts. We just want to be focusing on the good things that we, we can create and add in the society. If, you, if anybody has any questions, I'm, feel free to ask me. Thank you. Thank you. And that's it for this evening. Thank you. Next, we'll go on with mayor's announcements. Tonight, we have a significant retirement. Uh, Kerry Coutzer is with us. You can see what an asset he, he is to the, the, the community when we have microphones that work. He just jumps right back up there and fixes things. But Kerry was hired as a production associate at Cablevision in 1992 when the city took over the operation of the local access channel WSCS in 1997. Kerry was named the manager of this new department. Through the past 34 years, Kerry has made sure that this community was connected to what is happening in Sheboygan by various TV programs. This includes high school sports, parades, government meetings, entertainment, speakers, 
community news, public service announcements, and church services. Originally, WSCS was only available if you had cable vision, and now it's available on Charter Cable, ATT UVerse, video on demand, and available on the WSCS website, and also live streaming on the internet. Kerry has guided WS, WSCS through all of these changes, and, and it was really quite an accomplishment. Kerry and his staff end up working many weekends and evenings to film all the events in Sheboygan. During his tenure, he's had to improvise many times uh, to find a suitable solution to make sure that the show goes on. One example took place at a Lakeland football game where the, uh, and whenever a production takes place on location rather than in the studio, the likelihood of something not working goes way up. At this particular game, there was no direct communication or video link between Kerry directing in the truck and the announcers in the press box. He did have an intercom connection to the cameraman, so the solution was for the cameraman who was on top of the press box to stomp his feet on the roof so the announcers would know that it was time to start talking. One drawback to this low-tech fix was that the entire camera and picture shook at the start of each uh, stomp. It may have not been ideal, but it got the job done and was an example of Kerry's resourcefulness. I want to offer Kerry a big thank you from all the residents of Sheboygan and ask him to come to the podium for this special presentation. Kerry, the city of Sheboygan is honored to present you the Certificate of Appreciation in recognition of your 34-year career with WSCS-TV from 1982 to 2016, and I believe tomorrow is going to be Kerry's last day. If you want to come and say goodbye to him, I think at 12 o'clock they're going to have a, a cake, and you can uh, partake in that and uh, say thank to him for all the hard work. There you go. You want to say a few words? Thank you. Uh, I'd like to say thank you to the mayor and the common council for this nice recognition. Uh, Sue, how many minutes do I have? Uh, as many <laughs> as you want. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, giving a, a, a background history, you already have alluded to uh, cable TV coming to the Sheboygan area in 1982, and that's when I started uh, working for the cable uh, companies, which changed hands. Uh, several times and then I was hired by the city in 97. Uh, so it's been a, a great career. Uh, some other background history as far as technology. When I started working uh, covering council meetings, which if I do the math correctly, it's been 800 meetings, common council meetings, uh, and another 50 or so uh, community as a whole and, and special meetings. Uh, I've been here for many of those meetings and long hours. Uh, in the beginning, we would be here until 10 o'clock plus every meeting. And we would have our truck parked on Center Avenue below City Hall, uh, two or three cameras manned, and we'd drop the camera cables out the window over here and hook them up to the, to the truck. And uh, now we have four robotic cameras uh, which we've had for a number of years. So you can see uh, the technology is fairly improved in the quality image. Uh, and uh, I really appreciate all the uh, community people I've worked for over the years, uh, the dedication of the WSCS staff, and I'd like to thank all the uh, cable viewers that, that support our, our station and watch these meetings. Um, so thank you again. It's 12.30 for the cake. <laughs> UWS. Thank you, Kerry. Um, I'd like to just remind everybody that the leaf collection season begins on uh, the 10th of October. Uh, they see the banner ad on the city website to find out what day your uh, leaf collection will take place. And then also, I want to remind you, if you have some kids or grandkids, make sure you attend the Children's Teen and, and Book, Children and Teen Book Festival that's coming up this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And it'll be held at the Mead Library, the John Michael Cooler Arts Center, and Bookworm Gardens. Thank you.
Next, we'll go on to the consent agenda. That'll include items 3. Point Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, we have a hearing, first of all, item 2.1. This hearing is to amend the City of Sheboygan official zoning map and to change the use district classification of property at 1123 North 29th Street from Class SO Suburban Office to Class MR Mixed Residential Classification. Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Ma'am, you want to step up? That would be good. <laughs> Can we have your name? My name is Betty Grothy, and I am the executor of this um, house. The reason we need to have it rezoned is because we are trying to sell it, and without the rezoning, we cannot sell it. So that's all I have. Thank you, Betty. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone else wishing to be heard? Uh, Chad Pelichek? <clears throat> This will be acted on later on in the agenda, but just to follow up in the owner's uh, or the executor's comments, this is a property that's been built as a single family, has historically been a, his, a single family. Um, I don't, it, it appears that in about 1996, when the city converted to the current zoning ordinance, there was some oversight of this property and it was put into the mixed office and it should be single family. So um, staff doesn't have any issues with it. I know they're trying to sell it and it's a difficult to sell a legal non-conforming use property. Um, so the recommendation was to rezone it so there should be no issues with it. The property primarily around it is um, single family residence. Thank you for those comments. <coughs> is there anyone else wishing to be heard? Alderperson Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move to close the hearing. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> motion passes. Next, we'll go on to the consent agenda. Alderperson Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I uh, move to accept and file all uh, reports of officers, accept and adopt all reports of committees, and pass all resolutions and ordinances. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on any of the items in the consent agenda? <coughs> See nothing. Although, would the clerk please call the roll? Fourteen eyes. Motion passes. Uh, then next we'll go on to reports of officers. Uh, item 4.1 will lie over until November 7th. Items 4.2 through 4.7 will be referred to various committees. Under resolutions, item 5.1 is a resolution by Alderman Heidemann, Lewandowski, and Schneider adopting certain changes to the city's dental benefit plan effective for calendar year. 2017 coverage and establishing the monthly premium equivalent rates effective for January 2017 coverage and thereafter. Alderperson Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, as an initial uh, matter, I would move to suspend the rules and would ask, um, <coughs> Alderman, well, perhaps the city administrator to explain why the suspension is required. Uh, the, the city uh, begins its process of working with the employees for 2017 coverage, whether it be health insurance uh, or dental uh, or other insurances, uh, that um, open period uh, begins as early as next week. And uh, to be consistent with the health insurance change, which in past years has been a two-tier single and family, uh, the resolution before you uh, alters the dental plan to coincide where it is single uh, coverage, employee plus spouse, employee plus children, and then family coverage. With that in mind, I move to suspend the rules. Is there any objection to suspension? 
Seeing none, please proceed. I'll second. Thank you. Um, thank you. Uh, and then I would move to uh, put the resolution upon its passage. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Okay, we have a second. Uh, the item's on the floor for discussion. Seeing no discussion, would the clerk please call the roll? Fourteen ayes. Motion passes. Item 5.2 is a resolution by Alder Person Donahue authorizing the execution of a utility sidewalk easement in Lot 10, South Pier Platte, for the purpose of installing sidewalk along the southern edge of South Pier Drive. Alder Person Donahue. Uh, thank you, Mayor. As an initial uh, matter, uh, this particular resolution comes to us uh, for uh, uh, suspension of the rules and immediate enactment. Um, the, as I understand it, the sidewalk that the city intends to install um, is subject to an easement agreement with Blue Harbor, which has agreed to the easement with our approval today. Um, we are authorizing that work to go forward on a timely basis. And with that in mind, I move to suspend the rules. Second. Is there any objection to suspension? <coughs> Seeing none, please proceed. Thank you. I would uh, move to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Fourteen ayes. Motion passes. Moving on to reports of committees. Item 6.1 is an RC by law and licensing to whom is referred pursuant to RO number 95 of 1617 by the city clerk. Variance license application and recommends that beverage operators license number 1407 be denied based upon his failure to accurately reveal all relevant convictions on his application, his record of violations related to the license activity, and his record as a repeat law offender and failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderperson Lassard, or Holshoot. Thank you, Mayor. I ask, I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion? Is Devin Wolin here? Devin was invited to meet with our committee on two occasions and appeared at neither. It was an unanimous vote to turn his license down. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? <clears throat> If not, will the clerk please call the roll on the motion? <coughs> 14 ayes. Motion passes. Item 6.2 is an RC by law and licensing to whom is referred pursuant to RO number 95 of 1617 by the city clerk license applications and recommends that taxi cab driver's license number 1439 be denied based upon his record of violations related to the licensed activity, his record as a repeat law offender, and his failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderperson Holshue. Thank you. I ask that the RC... The report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion. Is Michael McKenna here? Michael McKenna was invited to um, two council meetings or two of our committee meetings and didn't appear in either one. And the entire committee that was present voted no to not give him a license. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? <coughs> Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Fourteen ayes. Motion passes. Item 6.3 is an RO by law and licensing to whom is referred pursuant to RO number 104 of 1617 by the city clerk submitting various, various license applications for the period ending December 31st of 2016, June 30th, 2017, and June 30th, 2018, and recommends that a Class A liquor license application to number, rather number 
3220 for J. Mart Liquor be sent back to the Common Council with no recommendation. Alderman Horseshoe. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, as the applicant was not in a presence at this meeting, I'm asking that this item be referred back to our committee. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to refer it back to the Law and Licensing Committee. Is there any discussion on that motion? Alderperson Jose. Uh, yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, I would like this subject to be discussed and voted on tonight. The applicant um, communicated with me before the meeting that he wants this issue voted on tonight, and there is no purpose in sending this back to the committee. It's clear the committee's what their, what their position is, and I think that the the uh, we've had speakers here tonight. We've had um, both for and against uh, the the matter, and I think the issue should be dealt with tonight. Thank you for those. So I'm going to I'm going to vote against uh, sending it back to the law license. Is there any other discussion? All the person trusted. Uh, we've been dealing with this issue now for. <clears throat> good. You're good. We've been dealing with this issue. I'm the alderman for that district. <clears throat> I'm the one that got the phone calls and got many of them. And I only had one person that actually wanted that mini mart liquor store on 15th. And that woman was already two sheets to the wind by 10 o'clock in the morning. These people in this neighborhood are trying to protect their livelihood, their homes. They have put all their money and resources into their home, just like the rest of us. And they do not want a mini mart liquor store in that neighborhood. I understand, Jose, that you feel that this gentleman needs to have some closure to the situation. <clears throat> but I feel that I need to ask myself as a council member and as their alderman two things. When I make a decision, who do I hurt and who do I help? And in this case, I am not going to hurt the people in that neighborhood and vote in favor of this liquor store because the people in the neighborhood have spoken. Thank you. Thank you. Alderperson Donahue. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm just going to speak in support of the motion to refer. Um, we've had a lot of, um, uh, I think, eloquent statements on both sides of what is obviously a very complex issue. Um, I'm troubled by the fact that in view of the, the complexity that it comes to us without a recommendation, I think there's nothing wrong with sending it back to the committee to a full committee uh, so we can have, we don't have a tied vote. Um, and we have members of the committee, Alder uh, uh, Trester has spoken eloquently you know, about her position, but there may be other positions and so forth. So I just think in, in the interest of, in a complex issue like this, of getting all the information that we need, I think referring it back to law and licensing is, is a smart idea. Thank you for those comments. Alderperson Jose. Uh, I respectfully disagree. It, it's going to go back to the committee. The opinions are, we know what the people's opinions are. Even if the Law and Licensing Committee would come down three to two, instead of voting a tie, come down three to two against his license, we would be right back here and I would be moving to approve his license against the committee's vote. So whether we have this vote tonight or two weeks from now or four weeks from now is uh, I think I think we're just we're just stalling it and putting it off. The uh, uh, applicant would like to see this issue decided tonight. We have all the facts. There are no more facts to be drawn. I'm, I, when we speak on this, I'm going to be speaking probably for at least five or ten minutes and have done some research and and. Um, I just think it's a, it's a waste of that committee's time to send it back to committee. Thank you. Alderperson Holshue. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I understand that his urgency to get a decision, but he didn't show up at our committee meeting to even discuss things with us at that particular time. And um, we have granted him a license for his tidy store, which he should have completed by, I believe, November. 
Um, I think that we didn't have an entirety in, commi in committee when this was brought forward, and, and I just urge everyone to allow the committee to do its work and send it back to committee. Thank you. Thank you. Alder Person Donahue. Um, and, and if we do send it back, I guess what I would be interested in, because I know that area well, I went to kindergarten at Washington School, but um, that's such a distant memory, I can't possibly remember anything, but um, it is a really mixed neighborhood. There are, um, as um, the, one of our speakers said tonight quite eloquently, was it 12 bars or six Sorry. bars within a 12, whatever. Um, and it's very much a commercial area, uh, but it's also, uh, you know, as you move out, it's very much a residential area. Um, I would be interested to know what um, our development folks think about this neighborhood and some analysis of the kinds of potential effects, both positive and negative, to the commercial neighborhood and also to the residential neighborhood. So that's information at least that I don't have at this point. Um, again, it's a complex issue, um, and I, I just, uh, speed kills. Thank you for those comments. Alder Person Jose. <laughs> uh, I reject uh, Alder Person Holshue's um, statement that because Mr. Adhikari was not there, that it should go back to the committee. He sent his representative, his architect was there, and I requested at the meeting no less than three times that she allow his architect to speak, and she did not allow his representative to speak. So what is the difference if we send it back there now when his representative was not allowed to speak last week, Tuesday? Thank you. Older person, Holshue. Thank you. Um, we had asked for the applicant to appear, and that's who we expected to speak with. But we have also taken information from our city police department um, and their recommendation was to not allow a liquor store and a convenience store as well. I don't know if we would like to hear from the police chief now or when it comes back to commit or back to council the next time. But if so, I would like um, to be able to open the floor to our chief of police so he can explain the problematic issues of having a liquor store with a convenience store with a gas station. Well, the person holds you. I think we have to, uh, you know, vote to keep it on the floor. Right now, the, the motion is to send it back to committee, and it's not really germane. Okay. So is there any more uh, discussion on referral back to committee? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? You all know what you're voting on, and I vote would be to refer it back to law and licensing. I'm sorry. Oh, forget it. They're processing. <clears throat> Bill, I don't have your. Just popped up, so it should be coming shortly. Yes. Is your vote yes? Eleven eyes, three no's. Motion passes. Okay, next we'll move on to matters laid over. Item seven point one. Let's see, no, six point four will be referred to the Board of Marina Parks and Forestry, and then seven point one is resolution number one hundred six of sixteen seventeen by Alderman Boren, Schneider, Bellinger, and Donahue, authorizing the sale of city-owned property in the Sheboygan Business Center lots totaling eight point seven acres and five point eight acres to Kiernan West LLC. Um, Alder Person Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I'm going to uh, make a motion to uh, pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the resolution? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Okay. 
13 ayes, one no. Motion passes. Item 7.2 is RO number 110 of 1617 by the City Planning Commission to whom is referred resolution number 81 of 1617 by Alderman Bourne approving the capital improvements program recommended by the Capital Improvements Commission for the program period of 2017 through 2021 and adopting the program for implementation and recommends passing the resolution. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. Make a motion to uh, to accept and file. And pass the resolution. And pass resolution. Second. We have a motion in support. Um, before we go on to discussion, I'd like to turn it over to our city administrator uh, for a brief presentation uh, by him and also uh, Carol Worth. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, this is uh, the sixth time it, uh, this has appeared on a public meeting agenda in addition to individual committee meetings in which department heads made uh, a report of individual projects associated with a 2017 to 2021 uh, five-year capital improvement plan. Uh, more recently, in, in July and August, the Capital Improvements Commission reviewed and unanimously recommended uh, approval of a five-year capital improvement plan as presented. And then again in August and September, the Plan Commission reviewed the five-year capital improvement. Uh, this ultimately resulted in a six to one recommendation for approval to you uh, for consideration tonight. Uh, this was discussed uh, by the Common Council as late as two weeks ago, but held over in light of uh, requests for additional information, including the city's financial advisor. Uh, the five year capital improvement plan uh, as presented uh, totals up to 127 million approximately. Uh, again, in, in the, in the document itself, it's a, it is a plan. It is a document that is used to guide staff, to guide committees, uh, and ultimately to be used as part of putting together future operating budgets. Uh, many of the recommended projects uh, specifically for 2017 are projects that leverage federal funds, state funds, county funds, and or special assessments. So in many cases, the, the value to the community is above and beyond what is, I know, a concern for many of you, and that is the amount to be borrowed for 2017. Uh, the good news for the city of Sheboygan is we have an exceptional bond rating, AA2. That's really the highest possible rating community uh, the size of Sheboygan and the economics of Sheboygan can probably achieve. Uh, it has been done with discipline over the years in that the city's debts uh, outstanding debt amount uh, has dropped um, and I think that's one of the reasons why tonight uh, we're discussing and have been discussing through the different committees uh, a five-year capital improvement plan that in fact is higher uh, in total project cost than what the council has reviewed and approved uh, in prior years so there in essence is is a little bit of a backlog 2017 is the largest of the five years uh, and again, 10.3, including half the costs associated with a possible city hall project, is included uh, for consideration. Um, as Mayor Mike identified, uh, Carol Wirth of Wisconsin Public Finance Professionals here tonight to discuss a little bit about the Moody's uh, rating service system, the city's debt, and the city's bond rating. Um, one thing I want to mention is that as, as we, as you consider tonight, uh, the five-year capital improvement plan, city staff has incorporated the, the economics associated with that five-year plan into what some of you, I think, sat through earlier this year, and that is a, a debt scorecard as put together by Moody's Investment Service. Uh, by incorporating the new economics of this five-year plan, uh, the score changes, I think, four points which is really insignificant if you look at the overall uh, scorecard uh, as, as, re, as the criteria uh, are created and incorporate the city's overall financial, uh, financial uh, items. Um, one thing I also want to mention is that uh, from early on in my employment uh, with the city of Sheboygan, uh, I heard about uh, a policy that was created back in 1997 which identified roughly $3 million of, of debt being the maximum amount uh, allowed. Uh, 
Uh, and over the years, there have been exceptions made. Uh, the police station was one project where variance was granted by the Common Council. Uh, but in asking for a copy of that document, uh, I realized that there was a second page to the document. And instead of it being a $3 million cap, the maximum amount sh should be indexed based upon equalized valuation increase by the city mm -hmm. of Sheboygan. So instead of a $3 million cap, uh, the because of indexing, it should be four and a half million dollar cap. And as I mentioned, the past uh, exceptions have been granted based upon special projects. With that uh, background, uh, Carol Worth is here. If you want to step up to the podium, Carol. Uh, again, in light of the uh, numerous items on the agenda, uh, even though Carol has put together a lot of background information, we've asked her to keep it to roughly 10 minutes. Thank you. And I'm just going to hand out um, some information here that if you'd like to just pass it down the row to hopefully, I think we should have plenty of copies here. Thank you. Well, while Carol's distributing those, uh, one thing I do want to mention, uh, more specifically about the 2017 projects. As I mentioned, it is the largest uh, year uh, for total costs of expenditures. 50% of the projects are public works related, mostly street projects. 40% uh, is, again, half the cost expected for a city hall project. Uh, <coughs> with the remaining 1.2 million, half of it's for fire department related expenses being initial repairs of the two fire stations that are of concern and uh, half a million dollars for a fire engine. The remaining 600,000 is miscellaneous projects such as uh, repair work uh, and uh, equipment repair replacement at, at the library. Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, the information that I've handed out is on the topic of bond ratings as well as information specific to the city of Sheboygan. And the purpose is to inform the council of the rating process and methodology used by Moody's Investor Service. And neither myself nor a single rating analyst can predict or determine the city's bond rating. Only Moody's Rating Committee can establish and determine the bond rating. Okay, so with that, I have five pages of information. I'm not going to read everything to you. It has a lot of great information for you. So if you do go back, I'm going to make you aware of what's on the page and what's significant. And maybe this will help you make your decision or feel a little bit better because you'll have more information about the process. So with that, the first page is the Moody's rating <coughs> symbols for what's called an investment grade rating. I'm sure you've all heard of junk bonds. That's not on this list. So you can see that there are categories of rating, triple A, double A, single A, and there is even a category called BAA, but we don't want to go there. So we primarily focus on the first three. The triple A rating category is the highest and it is stated as a single AAA rating. The other categories have ranges within them, and Moody's uses numbers, one, two, and three. One is the highest, and three is the lowest. So when you have a rating like AA2, it gives you an indication of where you rank within that category. So as you can see, the city of Sheboygan is what we call two notches below the highest rating achievable. And again, with all the information that we're going to share tonight, you can see how Moody's has come up with that rating. At the bottom of page one, I have some uh, check marks, and just again to explain <coughs> that a rating indicates credit strength and projected future credit risk. When investors are buying your bonds, they use this information in the marketplace to determine what your interest rate is going to be. An upgrade or a downgrade is going to uh, be different if you're going to have that happen within the rating category. 
such as if you're in a double A category and you're going to move from double A one or to two or to three, that is a different impact. Or if you're going to actually change categories as a result of a rating upgrade or downgrade. For instance, if you are a single A and you go up to a double A category, you're going to get a better, much better uh, reaction in terms of positive interest um, in, from investors and your interest rate will be much lower than if you just went from a an A1, uh, an A2 to an A1. Okay, so so that's something for you to uh, understand because the market will dictate how much of an impact. We're currently in a very low interest rate environment. So when we're in a very low interest rate environment, the interest rate differential is a little bit smaller than when you're not in this environment. So to give you an idea and apply it to City of Sheboygan directly. I took the financing that we did in April. We did two financings. They were both nine and a half year amortization. One was for 3.4 million and one was for 7 million five. The difference if you were to change upward or downward by one notch, and that notch would mean that you would go either to a double A1 or down to a double A3, would be a tenth of a percent for that type of a rating change. If you apply that to the $3.4 million financing, that change in interest cost over that life of that financing is $18,880. If you are applying that to the $7.5 million financing, again, that, that's $36,000. And again, that's over the life of the issue. That's not each and every year. That's over that nine and a half years. Okay, so, so that's the rating impact specifically for a city of Sheboygan financing. Okay, the next page is information about the rating process. And again, a lot of good information. I think I've laid it out in a, a format that you can um, pretty much go back to. Uh, however, I do want to share with you the process that when we start the process, we are assigned by Moody's what's called a lead analyst. That's our contact person. And that contact person is there to take our information. We have a conference call, a rating conference call. We present documents. And we then that person is responsible for the preparation of what's called a scorecard. Once that analyst has completed the scorecard and any other uh, questions that she may have of us, then she takes that information and is responsible for presenting it to rating committee. At that point is when the discussion takes place with the scorecard and also a subjective portion of the rating process. Moody's will refer to that as a below the line scoring. Uh, the scorecard they refer to as the above the line. And in that discussion, is when they can notch you up or down. There are no formal rules in place in terms of how they can do that, when they can do that, or by how much. So again, just to give you an understanding of the process, because this is new methodology that has been implemented as of 2014. Okay, both rating agencies, Standard & Poor's, also has a similar methodology. Prior to that, we would ask rating agencies, what can we do to improve our rating? Because many times they focus on fund balance. And we'd say, well, how much fund balance do we need in order to preserve our rating or, or be, be considered for an upgrade? And the answer was always, well, it depends. So you could never, ever get an answer as to exactly what you needed to do. And the reason it was, it depends, is because of all the factors associated with the rating process. Now, the rating process culminates with the publication of a publicly released credit report. That means it's out there in the investment world for all to see. And it contains the comments that is their opinion. And it has their opinion on several different topics. Now, at the bottom of this page, I've shared a couple of their comments with you right out of your credit report. So the excerpt from your July of 2016 credit report and their summary for your rating rationale, it says the AA2 rating reflects the city's moderately sized tax base with below average demographic profile. 
strong financial position, manageable debt burden, and affordable unfunded pension liabilities. Also included the report of the following strengths and challenges. And again, this is exactly how it's presented. The credit strengths, healthy financial profile categorized by strong reserves, manageable debt and pension obligations. The credit challenges, demographic profile is below those of similarly rated entities. Tax base has declined in six of the last seven fiscal years. Now, we have turned the corner on that in 2016. Equalized value has gone up. We're up 1.6% increase. So now when we go back for a rating, it's not going to read that way. Okay. Next page, I'm going to briefly cover this with you. This is the scorecard. Tons of numbers on here. I'm going to go through and just highlight. First of all, it's divided into what they call sectors, four sectors. The economy tax base is one, finances is the second, management, and the fourth, debt pensions. And you can see the percentage that they weight them. Now, the scoring is the better the credit rating, the fewer the points. Okay? Some people think if we get more points, we're doing good. No, it's the opposite. Of course it would be. So the other thing, when you see the score next to each category, there is the comparable rating category associated with that score. So you'll see the economy tax base, which for the, for the most part, the economy is a little bit out of your control. I mean, you definitely do things and act on things to help your local economy. Okay, but when you have things that we've just been through in the last few years, um, there's a lot of recovery going on that isn't necessarily because of something that you did. So uh, what it shows you is that the size of your tax base and your demographics, and they call that socioeconomic indices, are actually in the first one, the tax base size is in the double A category, but the two underneath it are in the single A category. The same with finances. You can see the scoring there. You are in the AAA category in everything related to finances. So that definitely shows that the things that are under your control, you've done wonderful. The management, there's a category called institutional framework. And that, you'll see the first one as A, and you instantly think, whoa, what is management doing here? No. That is a category that is assigned by Moody's to every city within the state of Wisconsin. It's reflective of the state of Wisconsin and, uh, for instance, levy limits that are imposed through legislation on all cities. Okay, so, so it has, it's just the fact that you're, you're going to be subject to what the state imposes on all cities. So every city in Wisconsin has an A there for that score. And then you have other uh, statistics, again, dealing with your, more your financial picture under that category. Again, you're in the AAA rating. Now we go into the debt pensions, and you can see there through the scoring, you're either in the AA category and you have one in the single A category. Now, that all totals up to a number, the score of 1.93, and they call that your AA2 unadjusted rating. That is referred to as above the line. Now, after they get that information, they go to the next step, and they start to uh, talk to committee with the uh, analyst, and they start to implement this uh, notching. This is a subjective part of the rating process. There's, as again, as I mentioned, there's no formal rule when to notch up or down and by how much. So this is the part that really makes it difficult because we can work with numbers, we can quantify the numbers. And now you're kind of looking through the minds of the people that are having this discussion. So n with me, I like to work with the numbers. So I've gone one step further and I've taken each one of those scores and I've put the numbers down below this page to show you where the scoring ranges fall because you may say, well, I'm a double A but am I at the top or am I at the bottom of the AA range? So each one of those shows you what range you're in. Are you high AA, low AA, or, or AAA? There is only one category for AAA. When I do that, 
and I look at that economy score, you have your single A category is actually in the A2 range. So you're kind of in the middle there of the, of the A category. That first one in the economy that's the double A, you're in the double A3 range. But again, things that are primarily out of your control. Your finance is perfect, all triple A. Your management, as we discussed, um, debt pensions, the first double A is actually a double A3. The next one is an A1. The next one is a double A2. And then you're followed by a double A3 and a double A2. So it kind of gives you a little bit of a peek into what they're leaning towards when they get to the point of then starting to have to talk about subjective part. Okay. The next page is debt calculations, information only. Just because you may say, well, geez, what is our debt or how is this calculated? Um, you have the, the rating agencies are going to look at your direct debt. That is the debt issued by the city. You're at about $34.8 million. However, your taxpayers also have to pay their share of the city of the, I'm sorry, the school district, the vocational district, and the county's debt. When I put that number on here, that debt by itself is another $37 million. So your taxpayers are paying the 34 and their share of the 37 million. Okay, so that's something, again, part of your rating process. Okay, the amortization of your debt is very rapid. Now that would be one example of when they are going to notch your rating up or down. That would be a notch up, <laughs> okay, because your rapid amortization would warrant um, a positive. Okay. Then you have limitations on your debt. And for the most part, everybody has a statutory limit. And in some cases, like you do here, you have a local government policy. <coughs> for the statutory limit, it's 5% of your equalized value. So I've done the math there for you to show that you have $122 million under that limit you are at 34.8, which leaves an 87.4. That doesn't mean that you want to go out and issue 87.4. It just represents your financial flexibility to the rating agency. And then, of course, the, we mentioned already the 97 resolution, and there's um, a calculation that basically speaks to 3% of your equalized value. If that was the case, that number would be the $73 million number. Okay, so again, just for you to have to help you through their discussion. The last page, and this is purely considerations for city administration and council. Okay, I've talked to you about the rating process and how um, the, it goes through the methodology and what might be in the mindset of the rating analyst. However, it does not and is not intended to any way address. Um, what decisions that you're faced with in terms of your capital project needs about the cost to do them or impact to do them or the cost not to do them or impact not to do them. Um, also, uh, we talked about extraordinary projects such as the city hall. That isn't something you do every single year. As an extraordinary project, when you bring extraordinary projects to a rating agency, they look at that as an extraordinary project. They say, okay, you're doing a <coughs> municipal facility. That's not something they expect to see happening every single year. So that is treated a little bit differently um, with regard to that subjective part. Uh, they'll look at debt policies and funding your projects. What other sources of revenues may be available? <coughs> you know, and I know that you've been talking about uh, that as well. Uh, where does the money come from, including using fund balance? Um, how does that work when you talk about fund balance? Well, you not only have your budgetary cycle that you talk about fund balance, you also have to think about are there any other commitments for your fund balance? Um, do you want to apply fund balance for projects? Because all of those things are going to make a difference when you go through the rating process. And it's not just a rating process for one year. The rating agencies look at your historical trends, your historical policies. 
If you're going to make changes to them, they're going to expect you to explain why you're making the changes. They would like to see a plan. Rating agencies are very much into what is your plan. Okay, so I just want to, you know, kind of, and that's what I'm giving you under number six there, the last item. It's, you know, going backwards, looking at what you've done, how you've adhered to your policies. It's your current year experience and it's also going forward. So the, the rating process really encompasses all areas, um, things that are under your control, things that are not under your control. So now that you've heard about all this, now you understand before they had a scorecard where at least they're trying to be a little more transparent to share with you their thought process. When you ask them a question such as how much fund balance do I need to have, the answer was it depends. Carol, thank you so much. Daryl, I appreciate your presentation. At this point, we'll open it up for discussion. Alder person who will shoe. Thank you. I guess my question is, by borrowing $10 million, you can't tell us how that's going to affect our budget. No, I, I can't tell you how it's going to affect it, but what you would do is you have to be prepared. Okay, I've given you kind of a peek at how your scoring is and nothing more than your scoring. However, if it is something, as I mentioned, for an extraordinary project, that is one explanation. If it's something that goes beyond that, then they expect and they will ask you, what is your explanation? It's not that it's good or bad. It's just you need to be prepared in order to provide that explanation. So that's how you get through your rating process. And there are times when you will impact your rating. If you do impact your rating, I've tried to help quantify what that means to you, okay, in terms of there's a cost that way. There's no way of knowing how this is going to impact. There is no way of knowing, and matter of fact, I went uh, one extra step where I've talked to uh, people at Moody's, not the rating analysts, because that's not their department, but I have talked to uh, people that offer the services for Moody's. And one of the services that they have that the city would be able to take advantage of is called a rating assessment service. I had that discussion um, because certain services aren't um, allowed for certain uh, scenarios and I explained, I says, is there a service or would this service allow us to come with a scenario that talks about issuing debt and or possibly fund balance or any other things that we want to present, would you be able to give us some type of information or feedback. And this rating assessment service, uh, matter of fact, he just got back to me as I was driving up here today, so we've been chasing him for a couple days. Um, and he said, oh yes, they've decided they can do this. Um, it's very, fairly new since they've come out with the methodology in 2014. But they would also do it for a fee of $30,000. Alderperson Holshue, when you asked your question, you mentioned the $10 million. Uh, just so you know, the resolution you're, you're voting on only includes $6.3 million in that Capital Improvements Program. The Capital Improvements Commission did not in include the $4 million that's on your sheet for City Hall renovations. So it's just a 6.3? And that's all that's they've approved, yes. And that 6.3 doesn't have any of the money coming in for the garbage fee or what we're getting from the um, county? Are any of those dollars going towards any of these purchases? Can you explain how those are being treated? Uh, I do not think uh, the five-year cap improvement includes that additional revenue source. The 2017 budget does take that into consideration, but the five-year cap improvement does not. Just because when it was initiated, uh, those numbers some of those revenue sources weren't uh, identified. Thank you. Moving on to the next uh, person, Alder Person Heidemann. Yes, thank you. Um, I guess uh, the what do they look at the impact of on a, on a community that's borrowing six million dollars, that's had a garbage fee, 
that, that, that also has a wheel tax and also is now paying a higher percentage sales tax onto our, our rating, in our rating system. So, you know, you got, you got three hits, now we're gonna give them another hit. Right as far as the community is concerned. Is, is, that of any, is that of any negative? What they're going to look at is your ability to generate revenues. What is your flexibility to generate revenues? They will look at your debt service payments in terms of how affordable they may be, and they do that by measuring it as a percentage of your operating budget expenditures. Okay, so they don't, they don't do it like you and I would normally think about We've got these charges, right? And, and that's not the, the way the assessment is done. Um, they look to you, especially municipalities that have levy limits, and they say, do you have any other options available because of levy limits? And so you say, yes, we have this fee, we have the sales tax, we have. So that's what they're looking at. They're not looking at how it's impacting the individual residents. Thank you. Thank you, all. Person Donahue. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Mayor. Um, <laughs> let me just start by saying how irritated I am that Moody's Rating Service, which deals in hard, concrete, fast amounts of money that we need to deal with, has a subjective below the line <coughs> scoring system. Yes. That is incomprehensible to me. Not your fault. I just wanted to say that on general principles, you know. Mm -hmm. No wonder the economy went to hell in 2008 <laughs> with uh, these folks in charge. In any event, um, so as, as I'm uh, analyzing this, and I, I appreciate your, uh, th this information is very helpful, it seems to me where we really have some problems in terms of maintaining our rating is if you look at the full value per capita and the socioeconomic indices, um, those are single A's. Mm -hmm. um, and I am going to suggest, uh, and not to in any way discount the, um, the low borrowing limits that we have had in the past couple of years um, and that have reduced our debt um, you know, to 28, I'm sorry, is it 28%, 28.5% of our legal limit. Um, and that's down considerably uh, in the past seven or eight years. Um, We've done that by not doing th some things that we need to do in order to maintain our city. And it's okay to do that for a couple of years, but it's not an ongoing solution. As I've said before, and I know you're tired of hearing me saying, it's like not painting your house in order to save money, not putting on a new roof so that you can save money. The problem is that when you finally get around to painting because the city's making you do it, um, it's gonna cost you more money and the roof is gonna cost more money. In our case, the roads are going to cost more money the equipment that we're looking at is going to cost more money. Um, we may decide philosophically that we don't like 3 million or that we don't like 6.3 million as opposed to 3 million. Um, I'm going to suggest to you that that may have some impact on the full value per capita and the socioeconomic indices. But we need to understand that if we decide that a smaller debt is more important than getting things done, if that's what we decide, we need to understand that there are implications, possibly for the Moody rating system, but also for our community. This, I, and I've said this before, and many of us have said this before, Sheboygan is changing. The, in the last couple of years, the, the level of economic growth, the growth, the 1.9% growth in our equalized value, the city's kind of, you know, in a really good way, on fire. Good things are happening, and that's happening because it's a nice looking city where you can drive down the road, most roads, without you know, taking out your transmission. I'm gonna to suggest to you that this $6.3 million is a real investment in our community. It's something that we need to do. I think it's economically reasonable. I think we cannot make this decision on the basis of the Moody rating. One, the amount of interest, if we do go down a notch, is relatively small. It has to be on the fact that you don't want to spend, you don't want to take out $6.3 million in debt, you only want to do three. And I'm just going to suggest from every perspective that you look at this, and also as I understand, and I, I would defer to, to, to Daryl on this, this doesn't change our tax levy. Our taxpayers aren't going to be paying more. They pay $1.27 out of the $9.52 rate per thousand. That's not going to change because we borrow more money. 
Do I have that right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I get this stuff wrong sometimes. So it is not, there is additional debt, but it's like the debt, you know, when you take out a loan to, to, to repair the roof on your house and so forth. So I really think that the $6.3 million is supportable. I think it's, as, as Daryl has pointed out, six different, it's been talked about six different times in public, and I think it's a result of a lot of hard work, and I think we should support it. Thank you for those comments. Alderperson Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm going to uh, present the opposing viewpoint to uh, Alderman Donahue. Um, I think this is reckless and irresponsible. Um, w what we're doing here is we're looking at $10.3 million, whether you have the, if you, whether you have the uh, city hall in there or not. If you take the city hall out, it's $6.3 million. And then what, if you index for that 97 uh, resolution, um, that's $4.5 million. So any way you look at it, it's a wild departure over our normal practices and a radical change. And that's something that the Moody's uh, committee uh, does not look favorably upon. So I, I'm against this. And, um, you know, we, we're looking at doing 10.3 this year, 6 6.8 next year, 4.3 the following year, 7.5 in 2020, and 5.4 in 2021 to run it up to $34 million. That's the five-year capital plan. Uh, we're, we're used to doing $3 million. If we were to take the 10.3, the which we want to borrow for this year, that's a 243% increase over the $3 million that we usually spend or borrow uh, to, to address our city's infrastructures and needs our capital needs. So in, if you take the 6.3, it's a 110% increase over the 3 million that we usually do. So what I would like to do is I would like to amend it uh, like I did two weeks ago and put a cap on it for $3.5 million, which would be a double digit increase and be 16% over what we've been borrowing in the past. It would address all of the mandatory projects which equal $3.1 million and still give us money left over to uh, do some of the other rated projects, you know, that we could, you know, do in the future with the, the extra money. And uh, then again, on a separate note, I would like to address the, um, the uh, borrowing for um, or the funding mechanism for the city hall, too. But first, I would like to um, amend this to uh, have a cap of $3.5 million. Second. We have a motion in uh, support. Under, we'll have discussion then on the amendment to limit the borrowing to $3.5 million for our capital improvements program in 2017. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> I guess we've been talking about this for far too long, and I want to compliment the. I want to compliment everybody in the council. Uh, this year and past years, I think we've done a great job reducing our debt, trying to be good stewards, but I also want to point out the fact that <clears throat> year over year we have not, as, as uh, it was brought up before, have not been fixing the continued infrastructure of, of the city. And I, I really think that just because we're talking about some large numbers, this year it seems that we're, we're finally looking at the budget and everybody's actually looking at it under a microscope uh, compared to years past. And what we need to understand is that <clears throat> For many, many years, since 1997, we haven't been spending the, the appropriate amount of money. We've been focusing on paying down debt, which is a good thing. It's what everybody should do personally and, and in business. But if we continue on the road that we're on, no pun intended, we're going to have roads like we do outside. Um, if we look at the mandatory items, it's over $3 million. Our actual um, allotment of spending is $3 million. And our, our, our citizens have told us boldly that they want the roads fixed. We know that it's going to take what I think the last plan was 15 years, 14, 15 years. Um, that's a long time. We look at our mandatory projects and we say, okay, well, maybe we got to stop purchasing those. Or obviously, like we've done, we haven't been fixing roads. Um, Right now, our debt is low. We are looking at making a big change. Our interest rates are good. 
I disagree. I, I, I'd like Carol to explain that the AAA isn't something that Sheboygan is going to even be a, able to achieve. So having said that, the only thing that we can do is either continue to keep our AA2 or move up to AA1, which again is just going to fluctuate a really good interest rate a little bit. Right now is a, an opportune time to get, get in while we can with the interest rate, get this stuff taken care of, that we owe it to our constituents, it's not affecting their, their tax, and fix things that we know need to be done. City Hall, that's still on the, on the table for discussion for the future. I support the 6.3. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? Uh, Alderman Person Jose. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to vote in support of the cap proposed by Alderman Bellinger. Um, it's really easy when it's not your money. And it's not our money, it's the taxpayers' money. It's really easy to borrow and put it on the tax of our kids and our grandkids, and I'm just not going to do it. I think it is reckless to borrow at that level, and so I'm going to support uh, Alderman Bellinger's cap. Thank you for those comments. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll on the amendment? Everybody know what the motion is? Yes. Susie, got it. Seven eyes, seven no's. I vote no. The main motion is back on the floor. Any other discussion on the main motion? Alder person holds you. I just want to have some clarity. All these items that you want to do add up to three point something million, correct? If you take the um, city hall renovation out, that would come to six point three three nine nine oh nine million dollars. That's what passed and was prioritized by the, uh, the Capital Improvements Commission. They took uh, one million dollars worth of projects out of the plan and they approved 6.3 million and that's what you have before you with the exception of the City Hall number. And this is all for 2017? That's correct. And this is a five-year plan? Correct. So what's happening? Why is it only one year? Can any of this be diverted over some other Can you years? review the subsequent years and the total borrowing in each of those years? Uh, the remaining years uh, of the 2017 to 2021 uh, capital improvement plan, uh, again, as you're aware, 6.3 for 2017, uh, 6.8 for 2018. That includes another 400 or 4 million for City Hall. 2019, 4.3, 2020, 7.5, and then 5.4 for 2021. And these are the geo borrowing amounts. Does that answer your question, Alderman Holshue? Yes, thank you. Okay, next, uh, Alderperson Bellinger. Thank you. Um, obviously, I can't support this. I believe this is wildly reckless and irresponsible. It is a complete departure from what we've done in the past, and we've heard from Carol, who was kind enough to drive up here today, <coughs> that the rating agency and the committee does not like radical departures from what your normal practices have been, and um, it, you know, it may have... Um, unintended consequences down the road and everybody seems to be cavalier here in their attitude that well we don't care if it goes down a little bit and our, it affects our interest rates a little bit we want to spend the money now um, uh, Alderman uh, Heideman mentioned earlier we've uh, we've incurred or we've uh, we've passed a wheel tax we've um, put on a uh, extended the garbage fee we get that fantastic money again from the county from the sales tax that they're giving us 
and we're feeing and spending and borrowing ourselves into oblivion. I think this is crazy that, that we're going down this road. So, I, you know, I think there's going to be unintended consequences. Will it be this year? Maybe, maybe not. But if we go down this path and extend the borrowing out in five years to another $35 million, we're back where we were seven, eight years ago when we tried to get our debt down. So I, I, I just cannot support this, and I can't tell you how disappointed I am in the leadership and that we're even voting on this. Thank you for those comments. Alderperson Donahue. Um, just uh, to start a point of clarification, um, the five-year plan is just a plan, and uh, we are not committing ourselves year over year to the, the five-year plan at this point? That is correct. All right, so this is a projection and certainly up for debate each and every year. Yes. Um, I'm just going to take exception um, at being called wildly reckless and uh, plotting to drive the city into oblivion. Um, that's not the case. Um, I think that one of the reasons that we grab at various revenue sources is because our levy rate has stayed virtually the same since 2005. We're 11 years into this absolute steady rate. And sadly, no matter how many people we cut, how many benefits we cut, we still have inflationary pressure and it has led to more and more and more cuts. As I understand it, out of the $9.52 per thousand that each of us is going to pay, in 2016 we pay of that amount $1.27 went for debt service and that's the same amount that's going to happen in 2017. This is not wildly reckless. We are not driving the city into oblivion. What we're trying to do is preserve the economic growth that we have going on now. And I would suggest that to the contrary, this is economically and governmentally sensible and a good way to move forward. Thank you for those comments. Alderperson Thiel. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I appreciate both sides that I'm hearing tonight. Um, I do think 6.3 is a little bit high. I think uh, Alderperson Bellinger's offer of the 3.5 that we just voted on, I think it was a little bit low. I think we really need to find a happy medium in there. Um, I really think we do need to spend more. Just by looking at some of these numbers here, I'm really thinking five grand is probably a pretty good number. It gets us five million. Five million. Five million sorry, five, five grand. Million. Yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> I would support five grand. Would you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, five million, I think, is a pretty good number. It gets a good chunk of those roads done that we're looking to do. Because obviously, I definitely support getting the roads done. Um, some of these projects could come in underneath that wheel tax, and as Alderperson Bellinger says, the gracious money from the the county that we get. Um, so I really think five grand is a good number that we should be really looking at. Five million. I keep saying five grand, why did I say that? <laughs> five million dollars I think is a pocket. good number for us. And I would make a motion to put it at five million dollars, not five grand. I'll second that. Okay, we have a, an amendment on the floor to amend it to five million dollars. Uh, discussion on that amendment. Seeing no discussion. Well, the, Clerk, please call the roll on the amendment for five million dollars. Give me one second. Who seconded it? I'm sorry. I did. Thank you. Twelve eyes, two noes. Motion passes. Okay, now we have a motion on the floor that's been amended to $5 million rather than 6.3. Any further discussion on the motion as amended? Seeing none, will the clerk please call a roll for passage?
13 ayes, one no. Motion passes. Moving on, item 7.3 is RO number 111 of 1617 by the City Planning Commission to who's, who has referred General Ordinance number 16 of 1617 by Alderperson Thiel and Lewandowski and RO number 101 of 1617 by the City Clerk amending the zoning map to change the use district classification of property located at 1123 North 29th Street from Class SO Suburban Office to Class MR Mixed Residential Classification and recommends approving the ordinance. Alderperson Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. I move to accept and file and pass the ordinance. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Fourteen eyes. Motion passes. Um, next we'll go on to other matters. City Attorney. 8.1 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31, 2016, June 30, 2017, and June 30, 2018. That'll be referred to the Law and Licensing Committee. 8.2 is a resolution by Alderperson Bellinger authorizing the purchasing agent to enter into contract for the testing of incoming and distribution of electrical power systems for the regional wastewater treatment plant and three outlying lift stations. That will be returned, uh, sent to the Public Works Committee. 8.3 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting a communication from the Wisconsin Historical Society notifying the City that an adequately documented nomination for Washington Elementary School, 1238 Geely Avenue, has been received. That will be sent to the Historic Preservation Committee. 8.4 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting a communication from Alderperson Lewandowski on behalf of Betsy Metcher requesting a street light to be installed in the block on 25th Street between Erie Avenue and Ontario Avenue. And that'll go to the Public Works Committee. 8.5 is a resolution by Alderperson Donahue uh, adopting the 2017 City of Sheboygan Compensation Program for non-represented employees. That'll go to Salary and Grievances Committee. Next is a contemplated uh, closed session. Alderperson Donahue. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. I move to convene in closed session under the exemption provided under Section 1985, Sub 1, Subby of Wisconsin Stats, where competitive and bargaining reasons require a closed session related to development opportunities for the Founders Club LLC. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Will the clerk please call the roll for closed session? Thirteen ayes, one no. Motion passes. I just want to let our viewing public know that uh, we have a committee of the whole meeting scheduled after the council meeting adjourns. So we'll be back in a short period of time uh, to hold the committee of the whole meeting. We'll take <laughs>